Hey, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I think, you know what, hold on, there we are. Um, so tonight we are going to be working on uh, a model from uh, Relic Knights. It's not a new model, but Relic Knights has been undergoing some uh, new version changes and we thought we'd celebrate a little bit because the models were always cool, but the rules really needed a revamp, and it looks like they got that, so uh, we're going to paint some of those models. Uh, tonight we're going to be painting one of the Hounds of Nozuki from No Empire, which is one of the factions. So I'm going to go to the close camera here, and let's take a look at it real fast. It's um, a cool hound. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely got some some uh, cool sculpting. Plus, it's hard to see with it being black right now. The, the lower jaw is actually split, and uh, while I didn't pose it particularly... Uh, interestingly here on this uh, you can have them splayed out a whole bunch more and make them look really freakish uh, you can do saliva effects in between them and everything um, which would definitely be uh, a cool effect to do on a couple of them I think I did uh, pose them a little differently on some of the other ones um, so right now I've just assembled this I think the model was only a handful of pieces it was like the main body this side had the two legs on it you just glued the, the legs on the other side and then the two pieces of the jaw. I think that was pretty much it. Um, so we're going to start off uh, like I do most models with a little bit of zenithal highlighting. Um, and uh, for this part, we're going to be using the uh, the Badger 360. And uh, I'm going to mix up just a little bit of um, Citadel Ceramite White, which uh, I find to go down a little bit easier when it comes to uh, Putting white on. Now we've said it before, but yeah. white through an airbrush, the Citadel, it's counterintuitive, you wouldn't think it. Yeah. But uh, that base white is such a uh, a rich paint. Yeah, you can thin it so much and um, it still maintains a lot of its, its opaque characteristics. Um, most of the time, with almost any Citadel paint, I wouldn't dare to run it through an airbrush, but this is. One of the few times where it's worth it. It just tends to go on a lot smoother and leave you with less speckling in the end. Um, okay, so let's see here. I'm just gonna test it on the, on the table there. Okay, we're moving here. So we're gonna come in from the top here. We're gonna do a thin layer real quick. going real easy on it here um, trying not to to make it too crazy bright on top we're gonna pick out a few spots in a second here to really pop um, in fact I think we probably have enough of a haze down right now um, where it's you know brighter on top and darker on the bottom um, we, could, we could probably just do another quick little yeah there we go we've got most of the details at least somewhat highlighted now um, I'm going to come back in and on like the shoulder sections where we think that a whole lot of light is going to hit, uh, let's go ahead and put a little bit more down. Um, I do have the, the PSI on this turned up pretty high. I'm going to turn that back down just a little bit. Um, okay, got it down a little bit under 20 now. That's still pretty darn high, but uh, that'll give us a little bit more control. This isn't normally an airbrush that you're going to be doing a lot of really fine detail work with but it sure does put out a lot of paint which is very nice when you're trying to base coat models and things I think that might have been a little too low let's turn it back up some also what you're doing let me ask you a mm -hmm. quick question sure. I noticed when you uh, when you're airbrushing you do this little thing where you tap the yep why do you do that um, it tends to uh, knock some of the paint that's sitting on the tip of the needle off so that in between strokes um, you don't uh, accidentally, like, here, let's see if we can do this on camera. If I pull this back and push it forward, you see how there's a bunch of paint now on it, yeah. now on the needle? So now if I turn this towards that and spray, oh, you know, this, yeah. this big spatter that just you don't happened. Want that. You don't want that um, when you start doing a second stroke. Okay, so let's come back in here and see if we can do a little more highlighting right there on the shoulder. So now you see we've got some like pinpointed highlights 
it doesn't necessarily measure up with how light would actually fall but because this isn't exactly a, a standard looking model this doesn't look realistic for any real world animal this is obviously uh, a caricature you know an anime style so we're going to really amp up the the contrast um, so we've got a lot of really dark areas on the legs and we want to bring a lot of big highlights up top and within reason um, especially for a, an object that small that you're gonna be playing on a tabletop mm -hmm. high contrast trumps realism right for a gaming piece right yeah um, I, I've come to that conclusion for almost everything that within I do within reason now. yeah within reason <laughs> within yeah. reason alright so I'm also gonna try to get in uh, on some of the face details I'm gonna try to leave most of the mouth pretty dark but are in and around um, the 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 snout I'm gonna try to see what we can do I kinda wanna leave the areas around the eyes pretty dark because we want the eyes to be really bright and we want something for it to contrast with. And if we have really bright areas around the eyes, then the eyes won't pop. So um, let's come in here and just get the, the tip of the nose just a little bit there. Um, and then maybe just a little bit on over, over the crest. So, so we got that, let's flip it over. Okay, so now we've got some contrast that we're building up. I don't want to overdo this. Maybe we'll put a little bit on the tail. Uh, let's, let's throw a little bit right there on the tail. Uh, are you gonna do anything on the top of the feet? Um, yeah, if we, if we do the top of the feet right now, uh, because I think that I'm gonna have, uh, you can kind of see sculpted in here, you've got a transition between kind of a woolly furry part and then the legs. Um, I'm thinking Policy, that we might yeah. want to transition that between a fur color, which is, uh, for, for this one, I'm going to do a blue. I'm going to do a really bright blue color and make it look just super bizarre and, and unreal. Um, and then maybe do for the legs some kind of uh, gray color. And then for the feet, uh, or the, the, the claws, do those in black. Um, so once we get the, the blue down, we'll put uh, gray over the, the bare leg areas uh, just to give us some, some contrast, maybe a, a medium, uh, medium gray color. Um, yeah, okay, so let's, uh, let's keep on rolling here. We've got this, and uh, I'm gonna switch colors real quick. Um, and uh, let's see here, what's next? I guess we'll do, let me get my dump cup over here. Um, We'll be doing a, uh, what's the blue ghost tent again? It's a plasma discharge, plasma fluid? Plasma fluid, plasma fluid. there we go. Definitely not plasma discharge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's oil discharge. That's, Is there? That's the, that's the, the, the black, kind of black blue. <laughs> plasma discharge. <laughs> Hey, I think oil discharge is the worst, man. That's true. I got that oily discharge. <laughs> that's not this kind of... That's not this kind of video, I think. No, you... no. <laughs> this isn't a WebMD article. We don't all have cancer. All right. It's what the... is going on here? Something. It's the lupus. Oh, okay. Yeah, what is that smell? I don't know. It smells like somebody hit a skunk in here. What is. Is this something up with my water? I hope not. This is what happens live, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does smell like a skunk. <laughs> is, it, is it that? No, I have no idea. Is it the dump cup? I don't think so. That's really weird. Oh my gosh. Maybe there's a... Oh, it, okay. is, it is all of a sudden, too. It is very, very sudden. Okay, well... Uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, if I spot a skunk, I'll let you know. Yeah. The viewers at home can't smell it, so let's just suffer through it for shall, a bit. shall we spray some zip kicker just to <laughs> smell? Some Febreze in here. Real talk, I like to smell a zip kicker. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, Reminds me of my childhood. So, jeez, man. Um, <laughs> just chemicals. All right. So this is a mix of uh, plasma fluid. Uh, it was a Minotaire paint from Badger, and I've just mixed it up with a little bit of uh, matte varnish. That bottle um, there? Yeah. I'm using... Uh, Americana, uh, ooh, there we go. 
uh, Duraclear. You can use whatever. Americana is fine. You can pick it up at a lot of just craft stores. Hobby Lobby and stuff. Yeah, I've had this bottle for about forever. Um, I only use a little bit of it at a time, and I just mix it with stuff like this. Um, so I know that paints go bad. They can. Uh, yeah. Over time, especially ones that are not in a, uh, a dropper bottle. Sure. But, uh, you know, or a well sealed. Would container. that varnish uh, ever go bad, or has it? Well, I mean, it, it can. Uh, I mean, this cap has. Broken. I've had it so long that the cap has come off. It doesn't actually. Well, as long as it stays anymore. reasonably yeah. sealed, it's not going to, like, dry out. It's so bad in here, guys. Hmm? I don't know what that smell is. <laughs> <laughs> this is boding well for. Our live you know, casts. I like how our live casts always have some sort of uh... <laughs> horrible malfunction. Is a piece of electronics catching fire or something in here? <laughs> oh my god! Stay tuned in. <laughs> Be ready to call the fire department. <laughs> All right, so we've got some loaded up in the same 360. We've still got it set relatively high uh, PSI wise. Um, is Kelly cooking something downstairs? I think she is. I could. It, it could be something that got burned. Okay, so um, we are uh, we're just going to do a light coat of this over the whole thing, um, and just light, just so that the xenosol still has an effect. So right. Like, we're not trying to so blow is this it a, out. So is this a glaze or? You know, it it works a lot like a glaze. Um, it's essentially trying to just coat all of the surface evenly. You're not trying to pull it down in any of the uh, the crevices. It isn't a wash, um, so it's just trying to, to cover everything. It's uh, amazing how much make. faster uh, this is than doing that same, getting that same result uh, with a brush. Well, yeah, I mean. We're able to get a, a pretty quick and easy transition there. Now, granted, um, this is super, super glossy right now, which um, you know we don't want for our finished product. We're going to have to matte it down a whole bunch. Uh, but we can just use matte varnish to, to deal with that. It seems like the top of the tail and the back of the spine. Yeah, we'll probably use another coating. But yeah, all that work that we did, I say all that work, it was like five seconds. But uh, the work that we did at the beginning, uh, giving ourselves those those spot highlights, uh, have now transitioned into this uh, really, really dark blackish blue on the underside. So you can actually get a little under there. I know that it doesn't seem like it shows up a lot, but it does uh, It does give it a, sort of a bluish sheen. You know, last time oh, uh, you were talking about how mm -hmm. blacks have different... Like, we always think of black as black. Yeah. I mean, you have a, a red black or a blue black or a purple black. It's essentially black is just overloading um, the the media with enough of a colored pigment that it gets so dark that you perceive it as black. And nothing. Uh, it's not reflecting. Um, is it like a metaphysical anything. truth? Uh, it's jeez, Joe. Jeez. <laughs> Trying to have a serious discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one who made your house smell like a skunk. Neither am I, I don't think. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> who knows what's going on, guys. Um, so. Can they see what you're doing over me? Let's see uh, maybe. I, all I'm doing, I've, I've got this lovely, very high-end, um, leak-proof salon care bottle. Um, it is, uh, whoop, went too far. Yeah, I, I always keep some of these... Uh, color applicator bottles around just full of water to um, basically clean my brush out with. I use a, I just hold the the thing over a cup and turn it sideways and use this to spray it out. Now, granted, that isn't the only thing you should do. I should. I know that somebody, one of you, asked me if I had paper towels or mm -hmm. something here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. Not prepared. Okay, so up next, uh, let's see. How do we want to tackle this? I think that we should probably still do a little bit more highlighting, um, and we could do that with either a blue gray or just a white with a blue. We might actually use um, the uh, Ooh, the neon blue. Yeah, we've got this super super bright blue here. It sort of separated. Let's uh, give it a quick shake. Um, but yeah, this is a uh, a Montana black. Um, or not Montana black. Montana. Uh, these are, what is this? This is the refiller uh, paint pen uh, bottles. Um, there's actually a, an art shop 
near us at some point that uh, that was started not doing so well and put everything on super duper sale, and we picked up a bunch you know, of the giant refiller bottles. I thought we mentioned this last time too, but uh, I mean those bottles have lasted you forever. Very They're long time. very bright, really good for a lot of applications, mm -hmm. and I never, as a layman, would have thought to go for a paint pen bottle. Yeah, um, it's it's not a. Did you an just see choice. that and was like, oh, want to use that? Well, I mean, or, it's an acrylic paint for a paint pen. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. That here. was a yes. Yeah, I, it's yes. Just as simple I just knew it. it. <laughs> yeah, it's acrylic paint. I know what acrylic paint does. Okay, so we're gonna come back in on some of the places that we did um, some of the highlighting, and we're just gonna do a little bit more highlight. So we're getting super meta and we're highlighting the highlight here. Yeah. And there's also still some places on top that I feel like are a little too dark still. So I'm just kind of doing a quick pass to brighten the whole thing up. Um, and so we still have some really dark areas underneath and then we have that on top. Um, and if we wanted to, uh, we could even just layer this whole thing up. I could do a light coat of this on top and then come back and do more glazing if we wanted to. Um, but I don't know if that's what we really want to do for this particular application. We still have plenty to do and we want to do this in an expedient fashion. You know, I need to get a camera that high quality mm -hmm. so I can just watch it as opposed to my hands when painting. Oh. Man, it's so easy to see that. Yeah, it's, it is it is nice, but uh, it is rather nerve-wracking when you're when you're trying to, to paint something and you can see all the flaws that your eyes can't see and you're trying to fix those things that you, you still can't see <laughs> with your own eyes. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, up next... Um, I always get to the part where I, I photo my models after I'm done painting them. I like all these look great, look great. Yeah. And you say, oh, oh no, that's a there's a there's an error there I didn't spot. Yeah. As soon as you take a picture, it's just like I'm not happy with it anymore. Yeah. Um, you, you always end up noticing things, um, which uh, that was one of the things I was actually just talking to somebody about this earlier this week. Um. They was asking about commission painting stuff, and they were asking you, what's the difference between a level four and a level five? At least for us, level five is for photography, whereas, I'm sorry, level five is for photography, whereas level four is just a good display model. Um, and the idea is that a level four and a level five to the naked eye will probably look very similar. Um, but it's when you take a high def photo of it and you're like, wow, that's still very clean as opposed to, ooh, I can see some of the little tiny imperfections so going on. So level one <laughs> is like level, very, very basic. Level one shouldn't be paid for or hit the table or... <laughs> level That's level zero on the sprue. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a kit, Joe. Uh, if you want a level zero model, I'll be happy to prepare it for you. Um, level two <laughs> is the basic level. Yeah, it's basically it's getting stuff ready for tournaments, more or less. So three colors and uh, goblin green on the base rim. Goblin green on the base. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm dating myself. I know, I'm dating myself. I know. I yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody uses that mess. Not anymore. Okay. Uh, back to the model at hand. Um, let's let's figure out what we're gonna do here. Uh, let's go ahead and do the skin on these. And I think that I'm going to leave it mostly black up near the top, but we're going to have it transition down to like a gray um, closer to the bottom. I thought I had a gray over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, right here. We've got uh, dusty ground. So let me ask you about your color choices. Sure. You know, do you spend a lot of time sitting at work, in the shower, or whatever, thinking about well, what color specifically am I going to use to paint this thing, like by the name, or do you just sort of eyeball it? Um. Oh, it's... With very few exceptions, it's just eyeballing it. Um, there are there are a few color combinations that are like the magic secret sauce, and they're not. And when I say secret sauce, I don't mean they're actually literally secret. Um, so I'm going to continue answering your question, but I'm going to point out what I'm doing here. I'm just going to take some of this uh, this dusty ground gray and go basically over the paws and part way up the legs, and then leave it darker closer up to the to the fur. Um, but as for color choices, you know, every once in a while you'll find a color combination that works really well and you think to yourself, oh, I need to remember that for this 
one particular effect, this color works really well. Um, whereas most of the time, realistically, I'm just kind of winging it. Um, I don't have a set color for particular things um, normally. Um, one that uh, comes to mind if I had to come up with something that I um, I would say is a, a really crazy combination that I wouldn't have thought you know I would have I would have found or, or it was better than I thought it would be at the time. Uh -huh. I think it was Reaper Lemon Yellow as a highlight on Citadel XV88. Use XV88 to block in a a uh, non-metallic metal gold object and then just do a line highlight outline it's, with the, it's the lemon of yellow. Gold. Yeah, and it's very evocative of gold. We did a lot of freehand trim work on a Contemptor Dreadnought for uh, Pre-Heresy Thousand Suns and it looked it looked better than I thought it could ever with just two color two color um, freehanding. So as opposed to like making a chart with like, well I know I'm going to need these paints. Yeah. You have like, okay, well, I want this part to be this color, sure. kind of. I know these couple of yeah. paints make this secret sauce. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of sauces. Yeah. I like mustard. And I think that Agrax Earthshade is the mustard of paints. Now, follow me. Okay. All right. It's I'm always good. Yeah. Yeah. And if it spills, it's going to be a mess. Yeah. And it's going to yeah. stain everything. And you're going to cry a little. And you're going to cry a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, if you guys can see <laughs> here, <laughs> what divergent path did we just take? I don't know. The, I don't know. the unholy idea of Agrax mustard shade. Yep. Uh, like I have, I have a mishmash of paints here. I've got a bunch over here in random buckets. Uh, you guys can't really see it there. Uh, the these bins up above my head. Those ones are those right there. Yeah, yeah, nope. th them, them right there. Yeah, look at that giant Joe. Don't look be how big you are, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't don't be a weather person, by the way. You're having real trouble there. <laughs> All right. So uh, those, those bins. I peach your head. Yes, I peach. Uh, are all full of other colors, and you don't need to have all of those colors. Um, you just need to have a selection that works well for you. I've got paints all over this room, and uh, it's just kind of a whatever I need. I look around and say, that looks like about what I need. Somewhere around here, I have a bucket of paints, and <laughs> somewhere amongst all of your stuff yeah, yeah. are probably several of my paints. Sure, sure. But, uh, you know, there's probably only a handful of the paints that I own that I actually use all that often. It's true. I mean, you do end up coming up with kind of a, a best hits of, of what you own. Um, so let's let's keep on rocking and rolling here. All right, so we've got we've got gray on these legs here. Um, we're still not looking, you know, crazy crazy good there. I think that we should probably wash these and maybe even with um, where is that? Uh, like the the gnome oil, the glossy gnome oil. I think that would probably look uh, really I thought good you on were that. Gonna suggest that I pull up my. Uh, very rare, very hard to find. That you gave me Azrin Blue. No, 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 no. I would not. I would not call upon the rare and wondrous Azrin Blue for just Games anything. Workshop. You're not going to watch this, but if you ever do, please bring it back. They're never going to bring that back. Okay, so we're going to use. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. All, I'm, all I'm, your hopes I'm, and dreams I'm, are my, dashed. My my job, Joe, is to dash your <laughs> dreams to tiny, tiny bits. All right. So we got the <laughs> Null Oil Gloss. Uh, I guess I better shake that up a bit. So let me ask you a question sure. because you're using a gloss. Yeah. So there's now two different types of, of non oils. There's a gloss and a non gloss. That is correct. Well, I use a gloss here. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Joe. You have to buy one of them. <laughs> you stole his thunder? <laughs> I'm sorry. Right out from under him. Okay. You want to ask it again? No. Yeah. Well, no, they it's heard out the there. It's out there now. now. It's, it's in, in the ether. ether. That's right. Ooh, man, I stole your phrase too. <laughs> I'm, just, just, I'm look. I'm gonna crawl under the table and we'll go home. Okay. Yeah. Try not to hit any wires on the way out. All right. So uh, the reason I'm using glossy, aside from the fact hard. that it is uh, within reach, um, is also that I've found a lot of times that the the gloss tends to give me a cleaner, uh, more even coat. So it's kind of almost like a, a the the halfway point between a glaze and a wash. Okay, this is re uh, revelatory to me. 
are you suggesting that sometimes where you would normally use null and oil, you'll now use glossy null and oil for coverage and then mat it down with a varnish over top? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That is that is the thing that I think it does best. I mean, I think that it was created as a technical paint so that, um, you know, if you were wanting to use it kind of as an effect on like... Like on a boiler or something? Sure. You know, it might be leaking some kind of nasty oil product that is very glossy. Right, more oil discharge, got it. Yep, yep. We keep <laughs> We're all over it. Coming back in circles, covered okay. in oil. <laughs> oh, man. Discharge. <sighs> yep. Um... But anyway, you don't have to necessarily use it for uh, its glossy properties. Um, you could very easily use it for its interesting, better coverage properties. Um, I've seen a lot of people use it for, um, what is it, uh, like oiled leather? Like using a, a red, um, well I guess it would be like a, a corn red or something, mm -hmm. um, and then using the glossy agrax on top of it ends up giving you a really nice oiled leather look, look. oh that's yeah. a, i would never have thought to do that yeah and uh, it's actually um the the guy who runs our local gw store whose name that i cannot remember at the moment but he is a fantastic awesome guy uh oh boy See, yeah if you hadn't asked me i know i know I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry, GW Store employee that I've spoken to on several occasions, and you are a very cool guy, but Thomas. I cannot. Thomas. Hey, Thank Thomas. you. There we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got you, so. Thomas. We got you, Thomas. <laughs> totally remembered your name. I can't forget my blood, Thomas. <laughs> Though I did for a split second. <laughs> yeah, We sure. go so far back. Yep. Um, so, up next, uh, I probably, once this is uh, all dry, I'm going to need to put a layer of... Uh, of matte varnish over most of this top area. Um, while the Montana is really fantastic and does lots of great things, it also tends to get reactivated by other paints. So just to is make that sure because it was it was formulated for a pen? Yeah, um, it's supposed to be for I guess basically like graffiti pens, and maybe I think they were trying to make it so that it would wash off. Most things, if it wasn't sealed down, most graffiti artists aren't gonna like seal their artwork down. They're just gonna do it and go because it's illegal. Um, but I mean, I guess you, you know. got a point there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take some of this matte varnish here. It's lovely. Are you gonna lovely. apply it with your fingers? I will not apply it with my fingers. I would have. Why? What is wrong with you, Joe? <laughs> I would have. You asking some basic questions. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so I'm I'm still just using the. Uh, the Badger 360 here. Um, and because the, I have set a box of paints on top of my table. Um, because uh, this stuff down at the bottom, uh, the the null oil gloss is, uh, is still drying a bit. I can see that some of the crevices are still a little wet. I'm gonna try to avoid that and just hit the parts up top that I actually touched. That you touched. really need to have sealed. Right yeah, now. exactly. You will eventually come back and rattle can seal the entire thing? Correct. So my next question about this is you're mm -hmm. running varnish through the airbrush. Yep. Is there any concern about that with any particular type of varnish? Or like if somebody goes out and gets a, a brand that's not the, the one you're using, what to look out for? Um, no, I mean, for the most part, varnish is going to be a varnish. I mean, this is super cheap stuff. There's nothing really all that special about the varnish that I'm using. I mean, I think I paid a whole, I don't know two dollars for this big bottle and it's lasting me just about forever um man that is that is the best deal in gaming you know, well it's not a gaming product which is why it was a good deal oh that's a good point um is that why you bought uh a, a salon care airbrush yeah. cleaner bottle yeah. as opposed to an airbrush cleaner bottle i'm sure that gw probably sells one of these and i bet you it's probably like 45 dollars yeah so mm -hmm. i mean it's going to be quality but it's going to be 45 dollars yeah. <laughs> Um, I bought that for a secretly, buck ninety-five. Secretly, I would love to have a malt wine cleaner um, of theirs, just just, yeah. just to try it out. Uh, you know, I think I've seen people using it, and it looks like it's really pretty handy. Um, I mean, I, mean I could probably use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to pay the money. For I think it's like twenty-something dollars, which I feel like is a little, a little much. Mm. 
I it might. It act, if I spent money on it, it might be something I do more regularly. So Wait, there's you should an clean your there. models Hold on, are anyway. You not, are you not cleaning your mold lines? I, I do when I think about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm dusting models by messing up, <laughs> spraying black. But but I at least clean my mold lines. So I get, that puts me at least morally on gotta the high ground. Clean your mold lines. You gotta drill your barrels. You gotta thin your paints. I haven't had a barrel to drill about ever. Yeah. So. Fair but enough. Luckily, Fair luckily enough. for that, because I'm pretty sure I'd just screw that. That would become a short barrel real quick. Yeah. All right. So, um, up next, let's uh, let's try to get some of the 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 rest of the broad strokes on here uh, before we have to to end tonight. I will eventually be putting um, some kind of stripes on this guy, the same way that they have in the um, the artwork. If you just look up uh, Hounds of Nozuki, um, No Empire. That's spelled N O H Empire. Um, you'll see how the, the, the stripes look on this. It just has, um, you know, a variety of, let me see if I can basically just point out. It's essentially just a couple little, like, stripes on the back that look like sparse zebra stripe kind of things. Um, but I really want to, I want to darken up the face a little bit. And I think maybe, um, some kind of purple around the face would really, uh, make those features look a little more sunken. Give us a dark, uh, palette to start working on those those eyes with um do i have do i have a a gt purple on here is this gt purple it is how about that all right so i've got ghost tent purple that was here. actually pretty unlikely that was highly unlikely that i was just going to reach into that box and grab a thing i knew that you had it but i figured it was like there yeah okay. that way somewhere so. Let's, uh, let's get this going. I know it looks really, like, grapey here. I was going to say, it does um, not look like a ghost tent to me at all. But if you look under here how it dries, it dries really, really dark. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, just just used to all my ghost tents looking like they're uh, some kind of wash in a bo giant bottle. Yeah. Um, do I have a piece of... Whoop, pardon me, guys. All right, so I'm just going to spray a little bit on this, uh, this piece of paper here just to check that color. Okay, so... On, on top of white, that's pretty bright, but if we're doing it on top of the really dark areas around the face, I think that we're going to find that it will show up quite dark. So, let's... Uh, oh, you know what? Your head's in the shop. Yeah. See, I feel like these are some of the risky things that you can do that you don't find so risky, but as like, you know, just a... I mean, I don't even know if I can call myself intermediate, but as an intermediate painter, yeah, I'll say it with confidence. I'm gonna this would be hard for me to choose to do this. In. Just a smidge. Let's see if we can. I think it's focused more on your finger than it is its face. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what we can do here. And there's something to be said about working with pushing your limits, but working within them. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like this right now. I'd I'd be heading for a simple green bath with this model. I'm saying. We'll try again tomorrow, folks. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's the way I felt. I got those. I really like the the vault dwellers that I painted. I mean, I really like them. But I want to add vault numbers to the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I paint by numbers. I mean, I need to have like it etched in the model. Freehanding that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt model. you for a second here, just so I can explain what I'm doing uh, before I move on. Um, I really like that contrast. I think that that looks really cool. So I think I'm gonna go back over some of the places where we have black. Um, and uh, and actually hit this with a little bit of purple, just just a tiny little shade of it to to give us some interesting color modulation and contrast here. Color Dude. modulation and contrast. For him, he throws purple on a model, and it's like, oh, we can work with this. I throw purple on a model, and it's like, well, might as well buy another one. <laughs> wow, that buddy. bad? Well, you you do it a lot with purple. Uh, yeah. You know, purple. You dunking it? Purple is a, is a is a color that shows wealth and regality. You know, I I make this myself. You know, it's definitely not a uh, a badger product. I have to go crush up these tiny snails? sea sea snails. <laughs> and um, so what you need to do is just like that video said, glop the paint on in thicker and thicker layers till it starts flaking off, so you can show the judges at the painting competition your wealth and success. Well, what I figure I'll do is I, I, I dunk it in the pot. It's a good and start. Then, and then, you know, you, you hook the model up to a drill. <laughs> put it in a box and you pull the trigger. It's going to be a nice even coat. That's right. Slung all over the box. That's right. 
All right, so let's look at what we got here. We got purple down here at the bottom of these these fur areas. We got a bright purple? blue. I did. He's got a purple butt. Little purple butt. It's good. It's his name now. Little purple butt. I like it. Um, okay, so this thing is looking pretty crazy right now. Um, Dank, the kids would say. Yes, I, I suppose if you must. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Judging me. <laughs> um, so, so are the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh boy um help I lost camera control <laughs> help <laughs> oh boy there we go <laughs> we almost waited a full 30 minutes I know I know <laughs> um so I'm gonna rinse this out really fast and um I think uh cause I'm kinda just winging it here honestly we we're coming we're coming in I know, we could tell yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, if I were to wing it, yeah, exactly. I, he's it would look winged. winged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be like, Austin, could you fix this, please? Exactly. <laughs> when oh, he wings boy. something, it looked like it was meant to be. Yeah, we, we sit here to pick up tips and try to understand, but at the end of the day, we're just sitting here going, so that's what he can do with our models that we I like to up. come over on a weekend or, or on, on a weekday evening. Mm -hmm. Just to get mad at my own lack of skill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're here? <laughs> Every time I get in, I get the car in your driveway and start backing out, I'm just God, that man. Yeah. Yep. Damn yep. his talent. Joe's just a sadist, just waiting to just soak up his his failure. Walking back and forth in the bathtub, <laughs> crying that I'm not good enough. <laughs> oh boy. When it comes to pain. Um. So I think uh, up next I should probably. Do something with the eyes. I oh think. god, he's going for the pink. Yeah, man. No, this is a bold move, cop. I just, I can't. <laughs> let's see, let's see how it works out for him. He's... <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little of this over here on my. Uh, I'm glad palette. they got to see that smile that you just cop there. <laughs> like, yeah. Let's go a little insane for a minute, guys. Here it is. All right. So, uh, I think. We'll do is uh, I'm gonna try to just hit the. Uh... By the way, do we have any like comments or anything? I guess no. We have like one person in. in... We have one strong viewer. Yeah. You are amazing. Yeah, man. You you're the best. You are our favorite. This thumbs up is for you. Part of a thumbs up because I'm zoomed in a lot. All right. So I'm gonna try to get in here and just basically lay down a little bit of this pink. Yeah, I uh, think. This uh, this hound is like straight out of the eighties, man. He looks it like looks a bowling like it belongs, alley floor. It looks like it belongs <laughs> in a uh, in a, in a retro wave video or like a shadow run. Uh, right now, he's kind of looking spectral to me. I think he looks great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, kind of apparitional. If that's a word. I might have made up a word there. You think you could do some OSL somehow? Yeah, we could. Um, we could make those eyes glow a little bit without um, without killing I feel like, the purple. I feel like it would it would yeah it would blow that purple out a lot. You know what? Let's do let's do some OSL that doesn't actually involve an airbrush. Oh, so let's get let's get a little fancy. Are those all eyes? Yeah, they've got. There's three eyes would, down each side. You know, even if. Uh, even seeing it in that close of a definition, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have told that that back one was an eye. I would have thought it was yeah. like a some kind of weird nodule. Thing. Yeah, I'm gonna say nodule. So he's got the mumps. Um, Bad case of it. We're gonna we're gonna come in here and do a little bit of highlighting on the inside of these ridges. There's these I guess they're lids or something around the eyes, mm. um, but that's where a lot of that light's gonna catch. So I'm gonna try. Your head's in the way. Oh, is it? Sorry. Um, the um, we're still on screen. We're still on screen. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of edge highlighting here, and I want it to be brightest right there at at the like lined up with the eye. So I'm gonna kind of pull from the edge towards the center, and then we could even come back in and do a little bit of white mixed in with this. To make it look like it's just that much brighter and hotter in the middle. Um, let's see if we can do that 
on the side here. I'm having a hard time getting my face close enough without getting it in camera. No breathing. Come on, take the paint. You know you want the paint. Paint is your friend. I thought okay. that wet paint should stick to dry paint. Uh, it does um, if your brush lets it go. I don't oh, know. I got you. Sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't want to go. Okay, so let's get this centered back up. Now let's see if we can get just a little touch here. Ooh, that kind of went all over the place, didn't it? Let's see if we can wipe that away. We did. All right. Need a little bit thicker paint. So. so if it had gone all over the place on me, wiping it away would have just made it worse. I was say when he said it went all over the place, I looked at it and went. I didn't see it, and I'm looking. At it the was camera. close enough. Yeah. <laughs> close enough works for me though. Good <laughs> enough. It's in the general area of what I was hoping for. So Actually, got, that, that's starting to really look good. The first when it was just that one alone. Uh huh. It looked a little strange. It looked a little strange, but now that it's starting to. It really is starting to like bring it together. So we can go on the underside too, just a little bit. I don't know if we want to do it on all of them, but if I get just a little bit of something there, right, yeah, right there, I feel like that starts to give you that that indication of this is this is glowing now, as opposed to it having some sort of like crazy monster eyeliner on. Um, monster makeup. I, but yeah. we're not we're not gonna judge it though. It can do what it wants. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get just a little bit of ceramite white, mix that in. I'm going to come back in and uh, let's see if we can do a couple of things here. I'm just going to touch in the center. And now we've got a slightly brighter area right on the edge of that highlight. I'm also going to see if I can get to make sure that the tip is really well formed on this brush. A well formed tip is, is one of the keys to success. So there we go. So now we got... You guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Stop me trying to make me laugh. Alright, let's see if we can get in here and not go blind. So since the brush is so important, why don't you uh, tell the audience what kind of brush you're using in case. It's a they Kalinsky Sable. This one is a Winsor Newton Series 7. I personally prefer a Raphael to a Winsor Newton Series 7. Is that the size? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Um, they're both good. I just find that the... Um, that the um, Raphael. the Raphael from brush to brush stays a lot more consistent, mm -hmm. whereas the um, the Windsor Newtons are all consistently good, but they're not quite all consistently the same good. You know what I mean? Like, I love they, my Raphael. They, yeah, they all they all work, but if you get really used to a particular, you know, Windsor Newton. Um, and then you buy another one because you lose it, break it, ruin it, do whatever to it, try to brush Wear super it glue out. onto something, you know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Listen, the super glue is already there. Yeah. I just brushed into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A likely story. <laughs> yes, for me, yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, quite unfortunate. I had not heard that story. That's great. It's he saved it. He pulled it out. Though. I did save it. I pulled it out. Yeah. I don't know how, but it's still functional. No pulling out jokes. Thank you. You, no one was going there. <laughs> he, I could see nope. his face. Nope, was not going to do that on camera for sure. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking about the audience. Yeah, sure. Our one person That's audience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a great time. Right? I'm sure. And then, and then they go away. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you see the meeple Watching on the screen, you know, the, the, the avatar of, of a couple people together, it's a very innocent looking picture. I wouldn't want to, you know... Sure. Change that. Sure. So, so, all right. This is this is where we've gotten uh, today. Probably, I'll just throw some stripes on the back here. Um, do a little bit of something with the teeth. Maybe uh, you know we'll follow in the footsteps of the the eyes are uh, pink and the claws are black. Maybe we we'll make the teeth black and the tongue pink, kind of like the eyes. 
Um, that way we just tie all of it together, maybe make the stripes black too, with a little bit of gray edge highlighting. Um, I think that'd, that'd work pretty well. Um, can we zoom out and actually see this whole blasted model at once? There we go, much better. Um, I think this is pretty successful for the half hour, 45 minutes. I mean, minutes I think it did. looks good. Yeah, I, th I think it looks really nice. I think that the eyes are really starting to tie it together. It was kind of looking like a weird icy blue blob for a bit there. But adding the definition of the eyes, and then once the the definition of the the stripes is on there, I think it'll look really good. Um, we'll we'll finish this up uh, probably off camera, and then uh, show it basically uh, next, next time. time. Next time on DRD Live. Um, so um, want to thank our our one live viewer who uh, thank you so much for for tuning in and hanging out with us while we did this. Uh, thanks for any of you who watch this after the fact as a recording on the YouTube. You are um, almost as important as that one viewer. Yeah, we just want to, you know, <laughs> call outs were call outs. You know what? You could have just not. Yeah. <laughs> you could have just you could have just not assigned a value. <laughs> oh, there's value. People have values. They need to know them. Oh boy. All right. Well, before we get ourselves into too much more hot water, we're gonna sign off for the night. Did, actually, like, wait. We we promised we'd talk about current or or. or upcoming events. Okay, well, the we big upcoming event is uh, is that we're going to Adepticon. Big surprise. We go. We are? Here. Yes. Yes, Joe, we're going to Adepticon. Oh, dude. You're right, <laughs> you're right in the back of the truck. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a cold, it's cold up there that time of year. It is very cold. Often. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes yeah. we get snow in March yeah. and it's, that's kind of weird for us. Well, that's Chicago. Carolinians. You know, anything mm. goes. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are going to be bringing uh, hopefully... Our A game, and maybe at least a B plus game <laughs> to Adepticon. Uh, we've got some new products we're going to launch at Adepticon, and some ones that'll launch very shortly before that you may get to see for the first time at Adepticon. Um, hopefully, we'll have lots of fun, get to meet lots of you guys, and um, go participate in a whole bunch of events. We are uh, sponsoring with a whole bunch of of the uh, Dark and Deadly Dungeons terrain, the Frostgrave into the Breeding Pits. Um, event that is being put on by Osprey um, and Ash from Grill Miniatures Gaming is going to be doing a lot of organization for that. Um, it's been uh, a lot of fun so far getting prepped for that. We have a ton of D3 tables uh, that we're working on currently. Um, they basically they've been cutting as we finish up some of the the painted stuff for the Kickstarter. Um, and they're they're piling up. Uh, so once uh, we get through with the last bits of the Kickstarter painting stuff, uh, we'll be moving on to that. Hopefully that'll be pretty quick. I think we've got a process. I think once we get it built. Yeah, it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, but um, anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. Well, you know what? Next time, um, if we're already into the the D3 stuff, maybe we should paint some of it on the show. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that could be that could be cool. We could do uh, we could do a how to assemble it, and then have some that are already pre prepped for you know primed and ready to go. We'll do a little bit of uh, you know uh, we're the old cooking shows where it's like when well, we made one ahead of time. Right, of course, yes. You know, <laughs> Julia uh, Childs. Yes, yeah. we are the Julia Childses of wargaming. Um, <laughs> that's, that's tagline right there. Yes, uh, I, I don't know why. I, we need to put that on a shirt, Joe. Yeah, I think we do. The Julia Childs is is of war. Speaking of shirts, maybe we should make a new shirt. Yeah, well, you know, he's he's calling out a particular shirt that uh, we've been working on for a little bit. We're getting ready to to press it. We're not ready to it's, talk it's about the, it yet. It's the one shirt. <laughs> it is the one shirt. We're working to on them. one single shirt. I have been. <laughs> Uh, do you weave fabric these days? I don't know how it's made, but I imagine... Straight out of a loom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. While doing it, it was very tiring for me. Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. We got to get out of here. We got to get out of here now. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's getting too late and too crazy. I'm just here to troll you, apparently. I know, I know. <laughs> that, that is your main job title, I think. It is, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, guys, thanks again for watching the show. Uh, we hope that uh, it was at least entertaining, maybe a little bit of uh, information that you could use on models and uh, your own hobby projects. Um, so tune in next time. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that little bell icon to get notifications whenever we go live or put up new videos. And until next time, happy wargaming. Happy wargaming. Chris, you not going to say anything? <laughs> Cut the feed, Chris! <laughs> <laughs>